Today I'm going to walk you through how to do a drawing of Mary with a flower wreath crown just in time for May crowning. You can change up any of the colors and let's get started. So the supplies that I'm using for this Mary crowning drawing are a piece of letter sized paper, a regular pencil, I have an extra eraser just in case and then something to color with. I'm going to be using colored pencils, but you can use crayons, markers, anything like that you want. And um, optional, if you want, you can um, get like a black pen or a marker that you can use if you want to um, do some darker outlines on your Mary. The other thing that I'm using, which is also optional, is I am using um, a cup that I'm going to be using for Mary's halo like a stencil. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my handy dandy pencil and I'm going to be starting off drawing the shape of Mary's head. So I want to make sure that I'm leaving a little bit of space between the top of the paper and where her head starts. For me, it's going to be about two fingers down from the top, but depending on how big or small your hands are, you might need to go down a little bit further. So I'm holding up two fingers from the top of my canvas, right about the middle, and I'm just going to put a little mark below my finger, wherever I want the top of her head to go. Her head is also going to be about two fingers or so wide. So if you want, you can use your fingers as a measuring tool to help you place um, how wide you want her head to be. I just put little dots to help me figure out how tall I want her head to go. The shape of her head, it's kind of like an oval, but it reminds me a little bit more of an egg because it's a little bit smaller, more narrow on one end, and it's a little bit wider on the other end. So using my pencil, I'm going to sketch in the shape of her head. I'm thinking oval or like egg shape. So a little bit more narrow where the chin is and a little bit wider where the top of her head is gonna go. And if at any point I am moving too fast and you need to catch up, you can always pause the video and get caught up to where I am in my drawing. Once I have her head shape sketched in, um, I'm going to be putting in this kind of triangle shape for the bangs um, of her hair. So it starts at a point, um, kind of in the middle of her head, but not all the way up at the top, a little bit lower. And the side swoops of her hair come down um, off to the left and the right, um, almost to the middle of her head. So you can do a swoop line, kind of like this, to create one swoop of her bangs and you can do another line coming down on the opposite side for the other part of her hair. And they should be about the same length down on her head. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to put in two slightly curved lines on either side of her chin to create her neck. Her neck isn't very big. It's maybe the size of your finger or a little bit smaller. So you want to leave a little bit of space, um, that way sh she has room for the width of her neck, but you're going to do a swoop line kind of down and to the left and a swoop line down and to the right, kind of like that. So before we finish the rest of Mary's neck, we're actually going to be putting in her little hands. And I have her hands um, folded um, in prayer, but you can make her hands different if you want. So right about where your neck ends, I want you to put a little line that goes up and down, kind of like this. This is going to be the line where her hands meet together in the middle. So. The shape of these kind of remind me of like a sunflower seed. It's a little bit pointed at the top and it's a little bit more round at the bottom. So on one side of the line, you're going to create um, a line like a sunflower seed or like a raindrop, a little bit pointed at the top and round at the bottom, kind of like this. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, 
a little bit pointed at the top and then round at the bottom. And one of the things I like about her hands is the way that it looks when it's all finished is it kind of reminds me of an upside down heart. You see the bumps of like the heart in the point of the heart. And that's kind of because she loves us very much. So those are her hands. So now that her hands are put in, we can draw in this curve line for the top of the neckline of her dress. So wherever your neck um, ended, you're going to create a curve, kind of like a smile. I'm stopping at the hands and then I continue my line on the other side until I connect to the other part of her neck, kind of like this. After we put in her neckline, we're gonna be putting in her arms. So her arms are angled off to the right and off to the left. Um, the shape kind of reminds me of an oval, but this part of the oval gets cut off because of her hand. Um, they um, kind of come out angled like this. So um, you're going to start off with a line kind of at a diagonal going off to the left starting at like where the wrist of her hand would be and um, when you get a little bit off to the left maybe about two fingers or so that's when you want to start to curve back to her hand so it kind of curves like part of an oval and then it connects all the way back up to her hand um, in prayer we're gonna do the same thing on the right side. So kind of a similar angle, about 45 degrees. So you're gonna do a line curved off to the right. And when you get about two fingers or so away, you can start to curve that oval shape back to her hand to create the shape of her arm. And anytime you make a mistake or you need to adjust the line, you can always erase as needed. So next we are going to put in these inner lines here and here on Mary's veil or mantle. So kind of like where the side of her face is or like where the ear would be on your head, there's this slight swoop line that comes down from the side of her head and stops right about where her elbow is. So here's about the middle of her head where I want to start this line and I come down past her neck and when I get towards her elbow, I kind of swoop the line just a little bit and have it connect to where her elbow is. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So kind of the same spot, but on the other side of her head, it's a gradual slope down, and then you're going to stop at the top of her arm, kind of like where her elbows are bent. So that's the inner part of her veil or mantle, kind of swoops out, really gradual curve. And now that we have these lines put in, we can add in lines for her shoulders. So instead of just starting um, where the end of her neck is and just going straight. I'm actually gonna start a little bit higher. That way it looks like the fabric of her dress is curved on top of her shoulder, kind of like that. So now that her shoulders are put in, we can also put in lines for the top of her torso. We're also gonna start to put in our waist. So there's two little lines kind of peeking out between um, the veil or mantle and the arms. So you wanna leave just a little bit of space showing um, here. That way it looks like her arm is kind of tucked behind. So you're gonna put one on one side and one on the other side. So these are the lines for her torso. So then what we're gonna do is we're going to put in a curved line kind of connecting um, in between her arms. It's kind of curved like a smile, but not a big smile, just kind of um, a little smile. So kind of where that line for her torso would be, that's about where you want um, 
the line for her waist to be. So about here and here. And you're going to kind of connect those marks with a curve, kind of like a smile. And that is going to create the shape of her waist. Then we're going to create like this stash that's gonna go like around her waist. So um, wherever the curve of the waist is, you're going to put one line down on the left side, just a small line straight down, and then one line down on the right side, just a little bit like that. Then we're going to do another curve, like a smile, to create a parallel line for um, her waist for this little sash that we have around it. And if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video to get caught up. You can always adjust your lines um, as you need to, if you need to um, change the shape of her waist or adjust anything on your drawing. So my waist is gonna be about two fingers wide. If yours is a little bit bigger or smaller, that is okay. Once you have Mary's waist put in, we are going to put in her skirt. I'm gonna give you some measurements to kind of help you figure out where you wanna place things. So um, the bottom of her skirt ends at the bottom of the drawing paper and it stops about two fingers up from the bottom. That way we have room for her feet. So if you were to find the middle of your paper down at the bottom, if you put two fingers above that and just put in a little mark above your top finger, kind of like this, that's a good place to put the bottom of her skirt. That way you still have room for her feet down at the very bottom. In my drawing, her skirt is going to be about four or five fingers wide. So I'm gonna start kind of at the bottom to help figure out how wide I want it to be. So it's gonna be about four or five fingers wide down at the bottom. So um, if it's helpful, you can put in the bottom of your skirt. It's kind of curved like a smile. And I'm doing it nice and light for now. And it's gonna be yeah, about four or five fingers wide. If you want it wider, if you want it narrower, that is okay. And once you kind of get that bottom placed in, you can start at the top where the waist is. I'm starting about here and I'm doing um, a slight curved line coming down from the left side, kind of swooping down towards the bottom of her skirt, kind of like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on the right side. And if it's a little bit wider or narrower at the bottom of your drawing, you can always erase any lines that you don't want or make the bottom of your skirt a little bit wider to match the sides. And then once her skirt is done, we can start to put in her feet. So the feet, um, we're going to put a line where we want the middle, where the feet, we want them to be touching. And then we're gonna do kind of like these U shapes to create the shape of the foot and to create um, the shape of the top part of the shoe that's covering her toes. So um, here's the middle of the hand. So if you just kind of go straight down in the middle, you can do a little line um, kind of like this. That's creating the spot where the feet are touching each other. And I'm just gonna do really simple feet. So um, the width of the foot is maybe about like the width of your pinky. And you're just gonna do a curved line, kind of like the letter U on one side and a curved line on the other side, kind of like this. And if your feet are a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, that is okay. Um, you also don't have to put shoes on her feet if you want to have her be barefoot, that's an option too. Um, once I get the little U's put in for her feet, I'm also going to add another U shape or smile line um, on one foot. It comes um, almost halfway up the foot and then I'm gonna do another smile or U line on the other side 
for the other part of her um, shoe. And you can always adjust as needed. Sometimes in artwork, people draw Mary standing on top of a snake. So if that was something you wanted to add to your drawing to make it look different than mine, that is okay with me. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to be adding in the flower crown that goes on top of her head. So since it's the month of May, um, I wanted to do flowers on the top of my Mary, kind of like a um, May crowning. So um, on the top of her head, there are three big roses. So these ones are a little bit bigger. And I did like a really simple spiral on the inside, kind of like cinnamon roll. If you wanna make your flowers different, that is okay with me. So um, I like to start with the rose um, in the middle of her head. So I do a circle shape and it's okay if it's not a perfect circle. I just do a circle shape kind of like this on the top of her head. And um, you can see that it's bigger than my eraser. And then now that I have one in the middle, I can put another circle on each side. So I can do one on the left, one on the right. You can make them however big or small you want, but I want at least three big ones. They're kind of like the centerpiece of her flower crown. And three also makes me think of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So once I get those circles put in for um, the first part of her crown, I have two little leaves on each side of the crown. And you can add leaves to yours if you want it different, that is fine. So when I put in a leaf, um, I start off with a curved line, think like um, a parenthesis on one side, and then I do a curve on the other side, and where they meet at the bottom, it's kind of pointed, so kind of like, um, like a V kind of shape. And then I put a line in the middle, like that. So curve like a parenthesis, curve like a parenthesis, but point where they touch like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Right? I have two smaller flowers, also roses, um, underneath. So I'm going to draw two more circles. They're just going to be a little bit smaller. So I'll do like one here. And one here. one here and one here all right so once i have all of my circles put in then i can add this spiral to kind of turn them into roses the spiral is kind of like a simple version of the flower petals so i find the middle of my circle and i go around and around and around until I have no more room to fit a spiral like that. Then I pick another rose and I go around and around in a spiral, however many will fit. And you can have them go the same way, you can have them go different directions, it is up to you. Just however many spirals fit, or if you want to do a different kind of flower altogether, that is okay. Now that we have some roses or flowers at the top of her head, we are going to finish Mary's mantle or veil. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to do these inside lines. So we had started the veil earlier and we stopped at the elbow, but we had to take a break from the veil because we needed to put in the skirt. But now that we have the skirt in, we can just continue this line by the elbow and do a curve, kind of like a parenthesis, starting at the elbow and connecting until you hit her skirt. You can do the same thing on the other side, do a slight curve line like a parenthesis and then stop when you hit her skirt, kind of like that. Then um, wherever the edge of your flower wreath is, you're going to do a similar kind of curve starting 
at the wreath and you're gonna swoop out and away and then connect to her skirt, kind of like this. So you're gonna do that on the left side as well as on the right side. Maybe you want her mantle to look different than the way that I'm doing mine. That is okay, feel free to change it up however you choose. And um, as I'm doing these, I'm just making sure that I have space um, for kind of like where on the sides as well as a little bit of space at the bottom, kind of like this. The last thing that we're gonna do is we are going to work on putting in Mary's face. So I did a really simple face. I have her eyes closed, her mouth closed, and she has a simple nose. All of these lines are simple curves, kind of like um, the curve of like a smile. If you wanna make her eyes open, you want her to look different than mine, that it's totally fine. You can change her however you want. So, um, her eyes are about the middle of her head. So here's the middle of my oval egg shape, and that's where I want to put the eyes of my Mary. So you wanna leave a little bit of space between the side of her head and where the edge of her eyebrow, sorry, her eyelid goes. And you also wanna put a little bit of space in between each eye, but they all line up straight. Sometimes people um, think it's helpful if you put in a guideline kind of like that. So like one for like the middle of the face and one across the center for like where the eyes would go. So if that's something that you think might help you, you are more than welcome to do that, but you don't have to. So um, her eyes go about the middle of the face. So you do a curve kind of like a smile on one side leave a little bit of space and then put a similar curve on the right side. So you should have a little bit of space between the edge of her face and the edge of the eyelid on both sides and you should have a little bit of space in the middle. So those are her eyes and if you want you can add some eyelashes to those eyes. Um, I usually put three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But you can do however many eyelashes you want. All right. Um, above her eyes, we have two lines for her eyebrows. So um, somewhere around where the bottom of the hair is, you can put one line above one eye, one line above the other eye. And also you wanna make sure that there's a gap in between those eyebrows. Um, in this remaining space, we're gonna put her nose and her mouth. So kind of halfway between the space that's left, between her eyes and the chin, you're going to put a little curve, kind of like a smile for the nose. I'm just doing really simple shapes and lines. You can change it up if you want yours a little bit different. And then in between the bottom of the nose and the chin, in the middle, that's where I wanna put her smile. So I just am doing a closed mouth smile, kind of like that. You can make it wide or small. And if you want to, you can even put like little lines on the edges, make like a little crease or not, your choice. And if you use guidelines, you can erase them after you finish placing the eyes, nose, and mouth on your Mary. Last but not least, if you want to, you can add a circle for a halo around your Mary. Um, you can just draw it as is, or if you prefer, you can take something like a cup and you can place it on top of your drawing where you want the halo to go. And then you can trace around. Does not have to be a perfect circle. Any shape or size will do. Halos look all different in different artists' paintings. 
but when you are all done, you have the option of coloring your Mary in. Um, if you want to, you are more than welcome to use um, something like a pen or a marker to create dark outlines around your Mary. Or if you don't have one on hand, you can just darken up the lines of your artwork so they're easier to see and you can erase the lines that you need to um, get rid of that you no longer need. So um, over this next part, I'm going to fast forward while I work on coloring my Mary. You can do any colors that you want to in yours. Um, I have a bunch of different color pencils that I'm going to be using to fill in mine. I might make my colors on this Mary a little bit different than the colors on this Mary. There are lots of Marian apparitions around the world where she shows up in different kinds of clothing, with different colors of skin, um, with different kinds of dresses. So you can customize your Mary however you want. So I'll go ahead and speed that up now. So whenever you finish working on your Marys, the only thing that's left to do is you can sign or initial your artwork if you want to. You can see that my Marys look very different from each other because of the colors that I used. And if your Mary looks different than mine, that is okay. The point is to have fun and to practice. God loves you unconditionally, and he loves your artwork unconditionally as well. Um, if you'd like to share your finished drawing with me, you can um, feel free to tag me. And I hope that you have a wonderful day and God bless.